Okay, so what I'm going to be needing for this project um, is a black charcoal pencil. Uh, I like to use a black charcoal pencil. This is a soft charcoal. Um, and I would basically use a kneadable eraser, one of these little putty erasers to erase any marks that I don't want. Um, and also a blending stump, which is basically just rolled up paper um, with a point to it. When your blending stumps get quite dirty, um, cleaning them is very easy. You just take a piece of sandpaper and lightly rub it on the sandpaper to get rid of the black. You can also use just a normal uh, 2B pencil. 2B pencils are nice and soft for working with, so if you don't want to work with charcoal, you can definitely use a pencil and just a normal eraser if you want to erase any lines. Um, I like working from photo references when I'm doing realistic work and my favorite go-to photographic references are these little hairstyle magazines that you can buy in any stationery or bookshop and they are usually filled with different um, shapes of faces and different hairstyles and different um, tilts of the head, um, side views, front views, profile views, absolutely so many to choose from. Um, and I'm going to show you how I would take um, a photographic reference and use it so that um, I get the proportions right when I'm drawing it onto my page. I'm going to use this big one here to show you what I would do. So I would just take a normal pencil, or you can take a pen if you like, and I would draw outline the shape of the head. Now the head is usually sort of an egg shape or a petal shape, depending whether it's a front view or a side profile view. And where the top of the skull would be is where I'm going to be drawing from, not where the hair is extending from. So I would draw a line, or a oval, in the shape of the head that I'm seeing. Um, I might just use a, um, a pen, a darker pen, a black pen, just to sh so that you can see the lines more clearly. So basically, it is the shape of the head. And because this head is turned slightly to the right, the center line is not in the middle of the head at the moment, but more to the side. So I would be making my middle line from the center, through the center of the forehead, the nose, and the lip down to the chin. And then from there to there, you find the middle line, which in this case is just above the eye line. And then you would take the middle line from that line to that line, which is around here, right below the nose. And then the center middle line from below the nose to the chin is the bottom of the lip. So we've divided the head into half, and from there to there, half again, and from there to there, half again. This gives you a good indication of where. Now what I like to do is I like to draw a second line just below the half line that goes just under the eyes. It gives me a good reference to work from where I would place the shape of the eyes in once I do the reference drawing on my paper. So I won't be um, working with this um, image. I have chosen another one. It's a little teeny tiny little one. But the reason why I like it is because her head, she's she's looking down, she's looking downwards and I just like I like that. So again I will take my pencil and I would draw the oval shape. In this instance she's a front facing oval with a head tilt down. Find the center line and again above the eyes the center, slightly below the line, uh, eyes another line, under the nose and under the bottom lip. So I'm going to be taking my charcoal pencil and first I'm going to draw an oval on my ready prepared um, piece of paper that I used all the leftover paint um, from 
a previous painting I did. I have a tutorial um, on my blog that shows you how I actually created this by using leftover paint. So if you haven't seen that and you would like to find out how I made this background, just refer back to the tutorial I did. Right, so I'm going to draw a oval shape. And I'm going to halve this oval shape. And then from there to there again, I'm going to find the halfway line. I think with this one, it's actually a slight bit of a curved line. See that she is looking down. And then that second line that I like to draw to get good eye placement. From that line to that line, um, a halfway line which will be under the nose. And from there to there, again, under the lip area. Sorry for the cat tail. That is my one of my cats, Lentil, who has decided to join us. <laughs> and she's got a very cheeky tail. Right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at my photographic reference and see where the eyes are situated um, on the photo. And I'm going to quickly draw in the detail. ball of the nose, the little nose flares. Remember we're not trying to copy what we're seeing, we're just using it as a photographic reference to get the proportions and the placements right of um, the face. indicates the bottom of the lip, which means the parting of the lip is going to be sitting somewhere around there. And that fulcrum, the little lip dip. And um, I'm not going to keep the hairstyle that she's got here with the bangs. I'm going to be trying something different. Um, Maybe I will even have a look at a photo reference to see an interesting idea, an interesting style of hair. Maybe something in this sort of style, where the um, parting of the hair actually sits quite low over the the head. And remember, that's the top end of the skull, but hair has usually got a little bit of bounce to it, so hair is just slightly higher up than where the skull is actually sitting. Now I'm going to have a look and see where the shadows are actually lying in my image and just follow exactly what I see. Just filling in the eyebrows a little bit. Um, just that little bit of shadow that's running along the side of the nose. Obviously the light on this image, then the light is coming from the left side of the face and there's slightly more shadow on the right side of the face. Top lip also is darker than what the bottom lip would be because there's more light falling on the bottom lip because it protrudes more than what the top lip does.
you'll always find that there's light falling on the ball of the eye even when the eyes are closed this is where the eye sits the ball so there'll be a bit of shadow sitting here but most of this will have a light reflecting on it and usually also right on the cheekbones there will be more of a highlight sitting and then you'll find that under the chin there will also be more of a highlight and now I'm going to take my blending stump and just soften everything up a little bit keeping in mind where the lights and the shadows are falling now obviously all the colors in the background of this is what's interfering at the moment with your work but that I will be sorting out just now when I start adding um, white paint or white gesso to my work as well this is just the initial first um, layering of your work before we um, so to say start painting on our work just blowing away some of the charcoal if you want your charcoal to stick better it is advisable to take your work and before you start drawing to paint a layer of clear gesso. A clear gesso or clear primer has got quite a grainy gritty tooth to it. It's very fine when it's dry but there's definitely a grittiness to it and that helps the charcoal to actually stick to the work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find a black pencil, pencil crayon, and this one is a Faber Castell, just a normal Faber Castell black pencil. I'll just get some paint off there. Then I'm just going to outline the eyes so that I don't lose this accidentally when I put my white paint on. In the next step I'm going to be taking out some of my white um, gesso and adding some highlights and pushing back some of the color on the face um, to bring up more of the features so I'll see you soon <laughs>